Hi guys, welcome back to Matt Chat. This is episode number 9, which covers yet another of the greatest games of all time. This week, we look at the Oregon Trail, a game developed in the early 1970s by a trio of student teachers in Minnesota. There was a history teacher named Don Raywish and his two colleagues in the math department, Bill Heineman and Paul Dillenberger, and their goal was to create a game that would help students learn about history. A fairly unique concept, and a very, I'm sure it was all very exciting in the early 1970s uh, when computers were very new and very few kids had access to them. Uh, later on, this game would be expanded in subsequent uh, revisions and new versions. It was uh, released the first time commercially in 1985. Uh, that version was for the Apple IIe computer. Uh, but it had been released before in various uh, public domain incarnations, and it was later ported and, and further enhanced uh, for platforms like the Atari 400-800, the uh, Commodore 64, whole, a whole slew of other platforms. And, as a matter of fact, even today, 25, oh, over 25 years later, it's still being released. Uh, there are versions for the iPhone, as well as a lot of uh, mobile mobile apps, including uh, browser-based games where you can play uh, the Oregon Trail right in your web browser. Uh, so there's still a lot of interest in this game, uh, even 25 years later. I think one of the reasons for that is they, they, uh, the developers chose a very interesting period of American history uh, to base their game. Uh, it's set in 1848 and involves this perilous trek all the way from Independence, Missouri uh, to the Willamette Valley in, Oklahoma, in uh, Oregon, sorry. A very dangerous and perilous journey, and the game does a great job of putting you in the, in, in the wagon, if you will, and you can see all of the different kinds of calamities and dangers these really brave uh, and courageous settlers faced on this trek. And there's even a, uh, an arcade sequence where you're shooting down deer and uh, bear, I'll show you that, uh, but also a lot of strategic elements, a lot of strategic planning uh, that has to go into uh, preparing for your uh, vo uh, trip. <laughs> uh, my name is Matt Barton. I am the author of Dungeons and Desktops, a book about computer role-playing games, and co-author with my friend Bill LeJudas of Vintage Games, a book that takes a broader perspective and talks about all kinds of uh, influential games from Pac-Man and Pole Position right up to Tomb Raider and Grand Theft Auto. And I'm working with Bill on a project called Woot, uh, the Video Game Revolution. Uh, now, you've heard me talk about these things before, uh, but I thought it was worth bringing up again uh, because this morning I had a, a very pleasant surprise. I got my copy of the St. Cloud Times and uh, <laughs> saw myself on the front page. Uh, this is not something that happens to me on an ordinary basis, so I was very uh, pleasantly surprised to see this. Uh, it's it's uh, quite new and exciting uh, stuff. And, uh, they do a good job in that article talking about the different projects I'm working on and uh, getting across some of my views about video games. Um, I'm really uh, fed up with a lot of this, uh, with a lot of the mass media coverage of video games. It seems like every time they talk about games, it's always in the context of a school shooting or uh, some really violent game or some really uh, sexist game. And you know, all of this uh, games being addictive, it's all of this uh, really a lot of nonsense. And uh, one of my goals as a video game historian is to uh, sweep this stuff, uh, or at least uh, minimize it, and talk more about how games have been positive, uh, some of the great things games have done, uh, some of the great things that, uh, that games have taught kids. And I think Oregon Trail is a great example of a game that's uh, far from violent. It has a lot of uh, very uh, <laughs> great values, and I'd and I like to see more uh, developers uh, take that approach. Okay, then, uh, without further ado, let's play the Oregon Trail. There are very few educational games that have had the success and long-lasting reputation of the Oregon Trail. Uh, this is a game that I'm sure uh, many people that are now in their 30s or even late 20s uh, will remember from their school days, especially if they had access to a computer class uh, where this game was installed, which was a surprisingly large number. The goal of the game is to lead a group of five settlers across the Oregon Trail. It's a very long trail and there's many strategic decisions that you have to make right off the bat. Uh, for instance, when should you leave? If you leave too soon or too late, you'll run into weather conditions that can have a major impact on your success. You also need to figure out how many supplies you want to buy. Uh, the amount of money is determined by whether you chose to be a carpenter, a banker, or a farmer. 
Uh, and you can see here just all of the different choices that you can make. You can, uh, you can specify how many oxen you want to buy, how much food per person. Um, so you could just spend all your money here at the beginning of the game, or you might decide to hold off until later because there will be opportunities along the way when you can uh, barter for things or, or buy supplies from forts. Uh, unfortunately, the further away, the yeah, the further away from Independence, Missouri, you get, the more expensive the prices are going to be. So you can see here, like a good computer role-playing game of the era, lots of choices to make to outfit your party. Uh, before embarking on the quest, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, for instance, uh, spare parts. Maybe you should buy some extra wheels and axles and tongues. Uh, you never know when those might break down on you at some point in your uh, on your trip. And I, I think it's kind of fun uh, just going into this blind uh, because it gives a, a fair analogy to the original settlers who probably were uh, naive about what they should buy. There I gave you a little taste of the music that plays inter intermittently through the game. There are various cutscenes, if you will, at points during your journey where you can see a nice color graphic and hear a Apple II re-endition of a classic American folk tune. So that's a nice feature too. Uh, here you see I'm talking to someone who's around, a traveler. Uh, there are lots of these that give you some, again, some more context about what life was like on the trail. It's one of my favorite things to do. Here we're finally getting underway. You can see, you'll soon see a little animation of my wagon. Um, every day, things can happen. I uh, see, Mark, you broke your leg there. Uh, you're using food, the weather changes, you uh, go further or shorter distances depending on the, the pace that you set and the, your health and the weather. There's all kinds of factors to play into this. Essentially what you're doing, you're arriving at certain landmarks along the way, uh, especially rivers. And when you get to a river, you have to find some way to cross it. You can pay, you can usually pay to have a ferry uh, take you across, a ferry operator. Or you can try to caulk up your boat and do it yourself. Or you can just wade in, uh, depending on the depth. Uh, so you see a little animation here of my wagon being ferried across. But again, it's a consideration Maybe you shouldn't spend all of your money at the beginning, so you'll have uh, enough money to, to uh, pay the ferry operators. Of course, eventually you're going to need to hunt, unless you truly bought a lot of food at the beginning. And the hunting is one of the two mini-games that I know of. Uh, you'll see my little guy there. I can uh, spin my gun around, try to shoot rabbits and deer. I can uh, move him around, too. But, of course, uh, then I might miss a shot. You sort of have to decide where you want to stand. Oh, I'm going to get the deer. Got him. <laughs> get the bison. Uh, one thing here is uh, I can only carry 100 pounds of food back to the wagon. So after killing a couple of big creatures, you're, you're pretty well done. But this is a nice way to replenish your food supply. It's fun. And it gives a little variety to the strategy and management of the rest of the gameplay. So here I wanted to skip ahead to show you the the final mini game. And there may be more mini games here. These are just the ones I'm I'm aware of. This is a rafting game. So you see my wagon there. I can move it to the left and right trying to get down these uh down down this river. Have to avoid the rocks and eventually I have to be over on the right hand side to pull off and onto the trail. And that's all for this week's Matt Chat. Happy trails.